Do you like to look through the Book of World Records? They are some of the most popular books in school libraries. They are almanacs, books of information that are updated and published each year. Do you ever look up into the night sky and wonder about what you see? Here's a short video produced by the publishers of the Farmer's Almanac, another popular book of information. Their almanac is full of lots of useful information, including what stargazers can see in the skies at night. Since ancient times, the Northern Lights have been one of nature's most intriguing anomalies. The Eskimos believed that they represented the souls of their unborn children, or the torches of long-departed ancestors. Others believe that the lights marked a dangerous, narrow pathway to heaven. This colorful display of lights is produced by a collision between charged particles emitted from the sun and air molecules in the Earth's atmosphere. The energy from the collision creates a spectacular display of different shapes and colors of glowing light rapidly moving in the night sky. The magnetic field of the Earth pulls the solar particles along its path and accelerates it toward the North and South Poles. These areas include Canada, Alaska, Finland, Scandinavia, and the Northern United States. The Northern Lights are the most stunning from October to March when nights are long and the sky is at its darkest. During periods of high activity on the sun, the region of auroral activity on Earth becomes wider and there is a greater chance of seeing the lights at lower latitudes where most people live. There are many different almanacs full of different information. Popular school almanacs include Scholastic Book of Records, Guinness Book of Records, the World Almanac for Kids, and the World Almanac. Finding information in an almanac is easy and it's fast. If you pick up an almanac, you can find information quicker than you can find it on the internet. But don't take my word for it. Let's watch some students and see how they use the general index in the World Almanac to find things quickly. Well, sometimes you can look things up online, but search engines don't always get you to the answer you want. And you don't always have a computer available. Yeah, I suppose that's true. What about an encyclopedia or a dictionary? Well, a dictionary is good for pronunciation or spelling or to look up the meaning of words. And an encyclopedia gives you a lot of in-depth information, but only on certain subjects. So neither one can do what an almanac can. What makes an almanac so great? Well, for one thing, it's published every year, so it always has up-to-date information. And it covers a ton of subjects. So it's a great place to look up facts or get ideas for a research paper. How come you know so much about the almanac? Well, last year at my old school, we had an Almania competition, and I kind of got started using the Almanac then. Once I started, I was hooked. I mean, there's so much cool stuff. There's lists and tables of facts about everything. What movies won Oscars? The best amusement parks in the world. Who had the most home runs in the National League last year? The tallest buildings in the world and where they're located. There are charts and graphs that show trends, like how popular SUVs have become. Or comparisons of which countries use the most energy. There are maps of different parts of the world. Interesting pictures. And short articles on a lot of different topics. You can find all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, I see what you mean. Well, speaking about finding stuff, if I'm going to do well tomorrow, I need some practice finding answers fast. Fast is good, but you need to make sure you get the right answer. That's why it's important to listen carefully to the question. 
Okay, I agree. So how do you find the right answers fast? Well, after you get the keywords from the question, then probably the most common way is the general index in the back of the book. It's all in alphabetical order. Let's give it a try. Here's a question. Since the beginning of civilization, rivers have helped to develop the interior of continents by providing transportation for raw materials, manufactured goods, and people. Three major rivers of the world are the Chang, the Nile, and the Amazon, according to the World Almanac, which is the longest. Well, we know the names of all three rivers, so we could look up each river individually in general index, but that would take a lot of time. Yeah, but we can use a keyword. We know they're all rivers, right? Right. So, let's look up rivers in the general index. Maybe if we're lucky, they'll all be listed together. Yeah, here it is, rivers. There are three pages listed. Let's try the first one. Here's a table of the principal rivers of the world. For each continent, the major rivers are listed in alphabetical order. The table also shows where the rivers end and their lengths. Now, if we scan the table for the names of each river, then we can find them fast. And all we have to do is compare their lengths. Okay, I'll scan the table if you'll take notes. Sounds good. Okay, we're looking for Chain, Nile, and Amazon. Mm, here's the Nile in Africa, 4,160 miles. The chain in Asia is 3,964 miles long. And the Amazon in South America is 4,000 miles. So, the answer is the Nile at 4,160 miles. <laughs> that was really good. That was fast. Yeah, looking up keywords in general index works really well.